we're in the garden today. Uh-huh. In fact, our last press day is about one week away from now. And we really, really need to find a solution to keep our animals out of our vegetable patch. For zero money. For zero money. We have a lot of bits and bobs left and really we're just trying to find a way to keep our dogs, our cats and our chicken out of our garden. Yeah, and the native dogs. Why yeah, because in Portugal, there's, I mean, your neighbor's dog will come and they'll play on your land. And the wild boar will definitely come and decimate your garden if you don't take the right precautions for it. So, Dan, we're in the garden today and we're reinforcing our fence. Yeah. So, let's do it! Yeah, I like it. I like it too. At least we're going to have the fence of a garden. wardrobe change because it is incredibly hot today well not maybe not incredibly hot but it is very hot uh, we're entering the, the part of the year where we don't know if we should dress up in shorts or in long in the morning it means several wardrobe changes throughout the day but as you can see we're doing progress at first that's good news bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time it's clear to see from up here the world seems small good fire with there huh? we can see and pillars and stuff like that it's so beautiful, you and me, we meant to be, in the great outdoors, forever free. ground level is where we have a herd of baby goats. Mm. In fact, when we took ownership of this land, one of the conditions for the sale was that we would not evict the baby goats that live in the basement of this house. For us, it was a no-brainer. I mean, 
the shepherd. We absolutely love her. And she can truly use the goat house as long as she wants. Yeah. At some point, this house will be restored. And for now, we're just juggling with a few ideas. Yeah. One of them being turning it into a fumero, so a traditional smokehouse, uh, because there's a fireplace there, which means that we can make chorizo, salpicón, ayeda, and all of this. All the goodness. All the goodness of the region, and then just dry everything in here as it was once used for. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing would be to restore it and to turn it into maybe a rental place. But right now, it's not really the best option because all the buildings around this house are the home of a herd of goats. So with goats comes ticks and fleas and that awesome goat scent as yeah. well. So it's not really a great option for us to think about restoring it and renting it out. Because the context in which this house fits in is just not ideal for anyone to live here. No, really. no. Storage is fine, but that's about it. That's about it. One other thing that this house has is a lot of resources. So if you look behind us, we've got some wood paneling here that maybe we can use for another project. There's some really big beams and some of them need to be replaced. We also have a lot of roof tiles and some of them are missing. So there's, there's all things that we always keep in mind whenever we're doing a project that there's resources that we can tap into in the goat house, in this house. Yeah. So for the fence project, well, we are here to grab a couple of things, right? Yeah, the bed frame for sure. Mm -hmm. So this house came partly furnished. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, ventilated, partially furnished. Yes, and we have an old bed frame. Let me show you. So we have this old bed frame here, which came with the house, and we think this could be an asset for the fence, right? Yeah, let's hope so. I let's know. hope so. Now, believe it or not, this house was cleaned one year ago, almost to the day, right? Yeah, almost. <laughs> almost to the day. And it looks like we've never cleaned it, but it it's is. It's so full of holes, so that when the wind the rips through, it takes in everything that comes with it everything that comes with it. Let us just give you a quick tour so that you can kind of appreciate the state of the house a little bit more and also so that you can see how much storage space we actually have here. Well, main entrance, entrance, I don't know, maybe seven square meters plus the fireplace area, another five square meters maybe. Okay, and head out to the... One of the main bedrooms. <laughs> Not close we get somewhere under eight square meters, maybe. And same thing with the, the smaller one. It's a bit smaller, maybe six square meters. Mm -hmm. So one day we're going to start here, but we do have storage for sure. Yes. It's not bulb storage for our garden. Mm -hmm. Bulb storage, a place to dry the onions yeah. and store the potatoes as well. Yeah. So that's why we don't build a garage or we don't need an extra shed. We get the goat house, but let's get out of here. Because I can feel that the fleas are already biting me. Having a fiesta. Yes. So the way we see it, guys, is that the bed frame that we just got from the goat house could maybe turn into a cage for the garden. So, yeah, we have uh, some brainstorming and some thinking to do. So just stick around. We'll get a plan in motion and we'll be right back with you.
see. I hand the carving work. Doop, doop. Let's see if it fits now. some bashing I think but yeah yeah it looks good Beautiful games. Yeah. The weaves to its advantage. Yeah. Make it so it's stuck there. Yeah. And then it's gonna be pivoting. Pivot. Pivots in the bottom there. Yeah. So that the gate is and then But yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm liking this gate more and more. Now hinges. We didn't buy any hinges. Uh, Dan went and he looked through his box of tricks and he's found a couple of good hinges. So he, it kind of, we're kind of realizing now how much it's paying off to have done the flip before we started the homestead here, right? Yeah, definitely. Because the flip kind of, although we we renovated the house, previous house, on a very small budget again, we managed to recuperate so much stuff from this. Hinges, uh, handles, we have, like, we have boxes full of bits and bobs, and they're really, really coming handy right now. They really are, like the hinges. Yes? Yeah. Everything yeah. is coming into everything we bought wrong before we're gonna use now. Because yeah, those hinges when we bought them for the flip you reminded me that it was actually for our bedroom door. I say our but for the flip's master bedroom. And then ended up buying the wrong side of hinges. But they're still the wrong side. <laughs> yes. There for the right side. Do a little something with this. I can let it go. Yeah. And then we just have to tighten this one up, drill in the rest of the, the screws. Yeah. And then we just have to make sure that the, the ground is following the gate. Yeah, because then we're going to do a little stone entrance there. Yeah. And then we're going to have the garden there. Yeah. Starting to Pretty good, be it. sexy, sexy, I think.
And already, because you've got the sticks there, the dogs are not going in the area. Yeah, for sure. No, it's looking amazing. You just have to have imagination a lot. Like all the projects that we do, it requires a little bit of imagination. Well, another beautiful day on the land. Uh -huh. Today we're March 18th, which means that our last cross date is in 3 or 13 days. So we really need to power through finishing the front of our fence for the garden. Now, we haven't been able to work on this project for a couple of days because it's been raining and today we have on and off rain. So let's see how much we can progress because we need to get this done so that we can get planting. Yeah. That's about that. So what you'll see next is more fencing, more weaving, more cutting and more progress. Hopefully finishing. Oh, my great. done weaving uh, with all the things that we had right yeah yeah and then the next step what you will see is just us tying some bits in the in the fans so Dan do you want to talk about this a little bit no, not that much to say it's just we're gonna take uh, tie off the loose ends in the top tie them together and then we're gonna cut the branches that sticks out up to this guy to make that these nice. ones Exactly. And then the rope we're using is hemp rope, so after a year or so in the sun and the rain, it's going to be not so much rope anymore. Yeah, biodegraded. Yeah. So, so yeah, so the idea why we need to use the rope is because, of course, when we're going to use the saw, the chainsaw or whatever saw we use, the fence will be shaken and then we don't want to destroy the work that we've just done. No. It's just to push everything closer and they are also going to put some ropes in the middle and here and there just to push the, the branches in yeah. and then by doing that we, since we notice it when we did the other fence while we do it everything is just stiffening up and becomes rock solid after the rope is in there actually yeah, yeah. and that fence is yeah it's still standing yeah the fence that we did more or less a year ago actually with using the same principle except that the other one we weaved it the other way so this one is a lot easier to weave this way as opposed to that way, yeah. if that makes sense. But that fence we only had the thicker ones. Yes. It was it hard to... Yeah. Yeah, and then we had to soak the sticks and uh, so on and so on. It was in the, was in the summer, no? It was, we did this before we got the building material and yeah. then we started building the house May 1st, 2022. Yeah. So, so yeah, less than a year ago. Yeah. And then we took ownership of the land on March 10th. But because well, the landowner, the previous landowner, is actually one of our friends. <laughs> He's like, if you want to get started in clearing before, go right ahead. Yeah. And so we came, we cleared the Cherry Hill, and then we built that little fence. And then, uh, then yeah, but we didn't start building until May 1st, until all the papers and everything was closed and then once we had okay from the camera and so on and so on yeah. so so yeah so that's uh that's that but now we're gonna be working on this fence we're gonna be tying some loose ends okay <laughs> tying up some loose ends tying up some loose ends what did you want to do nothing just love me for the rest of your life <laughs> small mission no mission Love me forever. Yes, you are. Aww.
Okay. Well, we have a little bit of chicken wire left. And this is leftover from the chicken run that we installed about a year ago. Now, it's not a whole lot, but I think it might just be enough to cover this door up to here maybe. Let's see how far we can go. And then just to make sure that the chickens and the dogs don't enter our garden through the big hole that we have there and big hole that we have there. That's the plan. Give me a hand here. Here's a look. It doesn't hurt. So I'm I'm just clipping their wings. Because one of you suggested that. Thank you, Wendy. Um yeah, Wendy was saying that she she's also letting her chickens free range. And then what she ended up doing, just to make sure that the animals were not decimating the garden, is clipping the wings. Not clipping the wings, it's, it's a fairly easy process. It takes a pair of scissors and I'm sure there's plenty of method. But what I end up doing is just cutting the excess so that there's less... Uh, there's less fluff for them to, to fly. Cut the outer part. Why? I think they have the, they cut the under, under wings, no? Uh -huh. You okay to cut? Yeah, I cut the other one already. There you go, Jean-Luc. He's a good rooster. No more flying for you. No more flying for you. Go, jean -Luc. Oh my god, I forgot the onion! <laughs> it's been growing a lot. It's been growing a lot. I need to trim those out. There's far too many onions. But yeah, I need to water them, trim those out. Wow, let's do the other one. Were, I think these are the flava beans that we planted the first time and now they're just oh there's peas growing there so the chickens didn't decimate everything <laughs> they did a good try on it they, they certainly did and that that's is... good that means at least uh, temporary greenhouse works pretty good oh it works so well this little thing next year better yeah. oh we have more peas growing there He's growing here. Yeah. Yay. So the stuff that I kind of had replanted because I had to, right? Oh, and we have so many radish here. Look, radish. Okay, it's like the world's tiniest radish, but 
And I check in. Yes, first food from the land. <laughs> Okay guys, so I've raised up the first two rows. I'm pretty happy with that. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do, and I suppose I won't be teaching you anything there, is just spread a bit of wood ash on our rows. Because I'm sure you know, ash is full of potassium and a lot of great things. So they're just particularly great for gardening. If not tested our soil, but it's been ages since anyone's grown anything in here. So I don't think I'm doing that much damage by adding a bit of wood ashes on here. Plus, it's a great place just to get rid of the ashes as well. What do you think, Phoebe? Yeah, we've not had the time to go in by a broad fork yet and uh, Eileen I know that you have sent us some cash to go buy a wheelbarrow thank you so very much um, I think we're gonna go to Braganze perhaps next week and this is when we're gonna be looking at purchasing the wheelbarrow and perhaps some more gardening tools because this is getting a bit old Now we're gonna go and have dinner, but we'll give you a better update tomorrow. Right, Dan? Yeah, definitely. I'm super happy with the progress today. Life is indeed a journey, and so is gardening. Well, for Christmas, two of our friends, Christina and James from the Quinta, sent us a great package with honey and candles that you would have seen in our other video. But most importantly, there's this sign, life is a journey. And to us, the best place that we can put this sign, it'll be right here on our door or somewhere on our door, just to remind us that gardening is also a journey because it's our first year really gardening and really homesteading. And we don't think we'll have only successes <laughs> it's about the journey right yeah a lot of learning opportunities a lot of learning opportunities so then you're gonna get installing and i'm gonna continue just doing my thing in there Where can we put it? well 
I like it here. Feel free to get to have like a reminder. A reminder. Thank you so much, James and Christina. We wanted to do a shout out to you guys before, but we didn't really have the opportunity. And the Christmas present really, really, really touched us. So thank you so much. And for you guys who are watching our channel, if you don't know the Quinta, uh, just it's really worth having a look at their channel because Christina and James are really, really hardworking people. And they do something similar to us, but a little bit different. They work with different medium, mostly uh, cement. So, yeah. And it's great that is. Oh, God, James. <laughs> and Christina's so crafty. I mean, she really is just a crafty person. Life is a journey. Let's start it. Been working in the garden all day by myself while Dan's and working on this project, which I think the garden project you'll see, well, this Sunday today when you see it, and Dan's project might be next Wednesday. But let me show you what I've done. Wow. So that's why I wanted the the broom, and I've added a. Uh, oh, it's all gonna stabilize. Yeah, right? yeah, it's all the things down and with the rain and water and whatnot. So I've added a stone imprint to the garden, so that the door can open and close, Stop. close <laughs> properly, <laughs> open and close properly up to there for okay. sure. Then it, it needs to be worked in a bit. Yes, it I needs to be worked in another stone here. But, uh, yes, we need another stone there, a really little stone, job, though, huh? a little stone it there. Be level, no? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then let me show you inside the garden. So yeah, yesterday I was around here, we're raising the piles, so I've raised this one, this one, raised this massive one, where we're going to have strawberries, a lot of strawberries here, and... It's hard to walk with this tripod. It is! <laughs> <laughs> and I've also added this one here, uh, where we're going to be planting asparagus. This means that in total we have eight rows that we can plant stuff in. How long does asparagus take before harvest? Is I it think it's two or three years. Two or three that years, yeah. In the ground. yeah. So it's kind of why I've put them here. In the back, yeah. Also, asparagus are really thorny. So, well, if there's a wild boar that decides to break the silva. And the three meter wall. And the three meter wall, yeah. Um, then at least it's going to come to another obstacle. But frankly, if the wild boar raves the silva and the wall, it deserves to have a story. <laughs> you should make him a place in the bed. Yeah. So yeah, so it looks like we're going to be ready for our last frost day, which is officially in two days from now for us. Good job, huh? Thank you, baby. You've done all this yourself, huh? Yes. Feels good? Feels amazing. <laughs> Feels amazing. But yeah, I mean, um, I've looked at the weather for the next 10 days and we are expecting temperature of 16 to 19 degrees Celsius. And at night it dips like down to four degrees. So in theory, I think I could plop the stuff in there, but just to be sure, we'll leave them in the greenhouse for a few more days. So guys, thank you so very much for watching us this week. Make sure to activate the notification bell if you're interested in knowing what Dan's been working on while I've been in the garden today. Because this is going to be published, hopefully, next Wednesday. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks a lot for watching. See ya. Ciao, ciao now. Bye.